Okay, thank you very much. I, I think uh, I'm going to go to another student now who has a, a question, I think, which follows on a little bit from what was being said there. Uh, it's uh, Mel Riley. Perhaps you'd like to tell us your question. Um, I was just wondering, is Brianne based on sound evidence? I like these kind of fundamental <laughs> questions that students come up with. <laughs> Who'd like to kick off with Brianne? Well, I suppose you're closer to me. Yeah. <laughs> because I'm connected with Brianne, I, I sort of immediately feel it's my fault. Um, I, think, I think it is. Um, I think the, the BRE have a real problem of balancing uh, the rigour which they sort of pride themselves in uh, that, to underpin some of the criteria that Bream assesses. Um, and the, the sort of benefit of getting that, that uh, point. Um, so I think some of the time when you're going through a BREAM assessment, it, the amount of sort of bureaucratic processes you have to go through seem unreasonable to, sort of, to demonstrate that you have complied with a, with a particular criteria. Um, and sometimes it feels that they have defined the problem in a particular way uh, just so that a load of consultants get some work to be sort of blunt. How, yes, I'd be slightly careful here. How, how wide is this going? I have to be slightly <laughs> circumspect. But I think I trust, I trust the rigour of Breen, and um, I think it's a, it's a thoroughly thoughtful process, and it's reviewed constantly. So I think it's, it's a robust process. I think it could do with being more open, and therefore some of the... Uh, there'd be a broader understanding of why things are the way they are. I think they should be more confident in their, um, the way they go about things. Can I say, following from that, I was, um, I did, uh, I had 20 students which are doing their part three, which means they are working on a project and they have to see it from design stage to construction stage. And we had to kind of look at, we were talking about the Brian or the cause of sustainable homes and saying uh, what happens when, do your clients consider the, the BRIAM or call sustainable homes? And they kind of generalized and said, was, BRIAM is a state symbol. And a lot of commercial buildings will go for that. But the moment you start talking with the small uh, clients, like a, you know, someone who wants to build an extension to their house or a new home, becomes extremely expensive item. And they were saying that there is no balancing act between the two of them. And the other thing is that because a lot of the BRIAM work has to be done at the pre-arrangement mm -hmm. side of the plan of the plan of work, that meant that you realize the cost implication of that, and then most of them they get discharged. If not, a lot of the things get done during the tender process. They can just say, no, we can't afford that. And then it's just kind of it seems to me that it never it's very difficult to get it finish in a way doing it because it's a very ticking boxy mm -hmm. exercise and it's found it very difficult and also because you have to do it before anything starts. Mm -hmm. Paul, any thoughts I've got nothing to add. Really. Right. Well, one of the things that I um, was actually I wanted to comment on is the ticking box exercise. Um, I've, I'm, a, um, I was saying before, I'm part of a uh, master course that the University of Nottingham runs in uh, Singapore with uh, the Building Construction Autonomy Authority and with local professionals. And in Singapore over the recent years, the Green Mark standard, which is derived partially from, from Briam and, and LEED, is becoming mandatory. And obviously this has started a, a process of uh, um, a lot of people being interested in seeing, first of all, whether, as you're asking, if it's based on sound evidence, and on the other hand, how it could actually influence the way in which design is, is, is made, both from the architect's and engineer point of view. And the result of that is that most of the times, the risk is that it turns out to be a tick boxing exercise, so that you deprive the design from some creativity once the target and the box that you were actually about to do, that you were aiming to take, has been has been has been met. While in theory, what I would suggest is that design should start from there. Design should start from meeting the standard or the minimum benchmark that you set to yourself, and then creatively trying to do some something more. So there's always, a, I think, a bit of a, um, attention that has to be given whenever you are. Uh, applying at the design stage um, uh, any kind of rating tool or scheme. I will, I will actually just just come back if I may, in that uh, uh, Briam has limitations, of course, Briam. Um, but one of the th 
and at the heart of it are a range, an extraordinary wide range of criteria to which various weightings are given. And you're having to compare, say, embodied energy with the toxicity of production or where it's sourced. And the number of factors that have to be considered are probably, on a lot of projects, beyond the scope of an ordinary design team in, in going about their normal business. So it may not be perfect, but uh, a lot of that decision-making, a lot of that thinking, a lot of that weighting of um, different criteria has been done by those who do think seriously about it in a way that is not open to most of us. So I think it, it should be supported. I think there's a couple of things that could come out of it. One is that it's constantly developing and ought to develop. Um, the other is that it's a tool that is in the public domain and therefore you can use bits of it. So you can have a small client who says, well, actually all I'm interested in is energy and I'm going to... I've now got some tools by which I can sort of define what a good standard uh, might be. I've forgotten the third thing. But I think, uh, I think those, those points, that it should develop and it's a good, it's a good basis of the crucial things. Can I just add a, su a supplementary question, really? It came out in the discussion this morning that, for example, when using um, the straw bales, that that was somehow outside mm. of, the, of the consideration. And also, straw bales seem to be self-evidently sensible in terms of in, uh, environmental concerns, but of course they don't score anything because they're not recycled in the other scheme. So these things, this is part of your idea that it needs to develop and yeah. be incorporated. I, I, I'm actually going to, I think probably at the next board meeting, I'm going to raise this issue that mm. there should be a sort of a register of things that people felt they weren't sufficiently rewarded for. Mm. And, and that would be a, a great way of, of uh, developing it. I mean, that, I have done a, I did do a bit of work on uh, the review of Bream when it was used for the Olympics, and it's quite interesting that some people felt that they weren't rewarded just for putting a lot of effort into trying to justify a point. Mm -hmm. And that seems to, I think you need to, you should be rewarded for achieving something, mm -hmm. not for the effort that you put into it. And ideally, ideally, the effort should be minimal, mm -hmm. as, as, as small as we can. Uh, my, yes, my other point, which it does relate, I think. Um, I mean, things like. Um, FSC timber, for example. I mean, I do wonder... That, that's a, a, a pretty tedious um, process of having to get the chain of custody of this timber all the way from the, the forest to your site. And it, it's a, it, inevitably, someone has lost a bit of paper along the way or, or <laughs> something, you know, or it's frankly just <laughs> illegal timber, I don't know. But, it, but it's quite a difficult process. It seems to me that if we're... If, as a nation, we're serious about um, trying to protect rainforests or trying to, to have sustainable timber, why isn't it simply dealt with at the, um, the, the borders of the country? Why, why do we? I mean, particularly when you have government targets that say we're going to use, you know, 50% FSC certified timber. Oh, no, no, I think it's 50%. We're going to not use 50% illegal timber. Well... If it's illegal, it's illegal. Why, why bother to let it into the country? Why not control it there, where it's simpler and all the, all the stuff's together <laughs> on one container, rather than do it when it's got to a site? But I, the, one, one of the things that comes in education a lot is like, you know, this thing about teaching sustainability and teaching, giving the skills and all that. The BRIAM allows a starting point yeah. and actually allows to criticize it, what works, what it doesn't. And so I always say to my students, at least think about the BRIAM as your or codes of sustainable home as a starting point. Get to know the system because at the end of the day, when you come out into the real world, you end up using that system or you will have to kind of get familiarized, regardless if you like it, tick box exercise or not. But we have to start somewhere and the BRE has given us a base point so why not use it and then we you know we can talk to the BRE and implement it if necessary. Yeah I mean I th certainly agree with the point that we should develop in our students this critical ability to look at those uh, look at those things and, and actually ask the questions. I mean it struck me about this whole system and it's always very strange isn't it that you seem to somebody comes up with these scores for these different things. So you're not only comparing apples and oranges, but it's ball bearings and basketballs as well. Mm. You know, it's, it's very difficult to see how those are judged sometimes. And sometimes I wonder whether it's possible using the Brian system to perhaps do less well on energy than you might be yeah. able to do uh, because you score things on, on other yeah. points. No, I agree. I, there's lots of discussion about whether it, you should come up with a number, which mm. is sort of neat, mm. but actually 
when you have a witch report on a washing machine, you have scores for you know water, whether mm. it cleans things. You know, you've got a list of things which you get stars for. And actually, people are perfectly intelligent enough to work out where they wish yeah. to value it. Yeah.